Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting edition of Manga Geekdom. Today we have a first impressions video on four different volume ones that I recently read that I wanna chat with you guys about. Some good stuff, if I do say so myself. Let's get started. The first book that we're gonna talk about is Go 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 Ghost. This is published by Yen Press and it is a story written and drawn by Miyako Hiruzuka. This tells the story of Ushiro Akechi, who is unfortunately participant in an illicit affair at her work with a co-worker. Unfortunately, he promised the world to her, but it turned out not to be true. And as a result, she got sued and was publicly embarrassed by her company, forced to quit her job and is now on the hunt for for a new one as a temporary worker in different agencies and other workplaces in Japan. And at the start of the manga, we find out that they're not necessarily giving her the best deal with her contract. So all this stress and anger, frustration just accumulates in heavy drinking, smoking, not eating, and of course, taking different types of drugs to supposedly heal the body, which turns into a huge mess and a nearly fatal overdose for the character. She thinks she's dead, but she's sort of in this limbo half dead state where her spirit has escaped her body, but is still present. She doesn't know it at first, and she thinks she is finally meeting her maker, but it turns out to be her guardian spirit or older sister. Masako is a very curious ghost. She is extremely extroverted, smoking and drinking and wanting to have a good time, but at the same time taking care of Ushiro and has supposedly been watching over her for the best intentions, protecting her from scams and other dubious characters and evil spirits that might show up and stuff like that. So that wacky premise launches us into this book. This isn't a long series. I believe it's only 30-ish chapters long, so it's not going to be a huge tale to cover. I believe this will be collected in five volumes total. Art-wise, I think this is a home run. I love sort of that indie scratchy feel to the artwork and the character designs. They all look fully mature. I appreciate that it's with older people and not necessarily a rom-com or uh, people in their teens going about with supernatural hijinks. Very rarely do we get licensed material with adults dealing with the supernatural aspect, so I welcome that. I think the dynamic between the two characters is really fun. The whole aspect that Akechi is trying to utilize this second opportunity, if you will, uh, being saved from death. Masako was able to sort of bring her back to her senses and, and put that spirit back in her body. And now she gets a second lease on life and is going to use this opportunity to maybe cause some mischief, maybe not. We'll have to see. On this first book, we get a lot of standalone stories that deal with uh, grudges that the character has. And Masako, the spirit, is going to help avenge that grudge. And it leads to some comedic moments as well as some bittersweet moments as well. There's a story with a dog, which was uh, pretty emotional. Uh, there are others that are more comical in nature with this lady trying to scam our protagonist and so on and so forth. Honestly, if you're looking for a workplace comedy with the twist of the supernatural, I think you'll be right at home with Go 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 Ghost. Definitely pick this one up if you're interested. I do recommend it. From Atsushi Kaneko, as well as Fanta Graphics, comes one of my most anticipated reads of the year. This is Search and Destroy. I was really excited for this. It's only 20 chapters collected across three volumes. We gotta wait a little bit for volume two, but man, what a way to debut. This volume one was exceptional. This is easily one of my favorite reads of the year so far as of this video. I love this so much. If you don't know what's Search and Destroy is. This is essentially Atsushi Kaneko doing his own take, sort of reimagining the world of Dororo from Osamu Tezuka in a more contemporary setting with adding futuristic elements. This is a world that is in the far future, but still has similar traits to our own. And there are two types of beings, if you will. We have creatures which serve the human elite and they're sort of mercenary robots. The other are called Hue, which is a play on the word human, and are just regular folk. 
the human elite control the main cities. I don't believe we have a full layout of what happened because at the start there is this war that has taken the lives of many including humans and creatures and we follow the story of Hyaku who is taking the spot of Hyakimaru from the original Dororo as well as following this young kid called Doro who is living in the streets and in the gutters if you will and is sort of labeled as a street rat and she's going around trying to make a living for herself by pickpocketing or trying to get food whatever way she can. Hyaku similar to the original Hyakimaru from Dororo is looking through the city for all the creatures that have stolen body parts that belong to her. I think the total being 48. The biggest compliment I can give this manga is how fluid, how well constructed everything is. This is phenomenal folks. The art is breathtaking. The heavy usage of inks is very interesting, obviously accentuating all the movements and scenes, highlighting the emotions of these characters, and just the sharp contrast of having like super deep blacks next to the deep whites really gives this an emotional twist. The characters, no matter if they're good or bad, they seem to pop off from the page as you're reading with their movements looking so detailed. Obviously, contrasting that with the cartoonish elements of the character designs. Just an awesome way to reimagine something. It is dark, gritty, mysterious, but it is also filled with hope as you know that Hyaku's quest is going to lead her down the path of befriending Dodo and becoming that partnership that we know from the original story. Obviously the bad guys, well, they're gonna be in trouble because uh, Hyaku ain't messing around. She's got these prosthetic robotic limbs that she uses to fight and she is absolutely brutal in this series. The violence is very grotesque at times but it serves a purpose to show us the elites and how abundant they are in their wealth, greed, and power and of course characters like Hyaku who are literal outcasts of society, remnants of an era that is no more considering that the war has ended and they've quote-unquote rebuilt society. I could go on, but I don't want to bore you with all the details. I think this is a fascinating look, a really good way to reimagine a classic while adding new elements and making it seem relevant to today's political climate of the disenfranchised. I think this is easily one of the best releases of the year. I think everybody should check this out. Obviously this came out a while ago. I think it was 2018 when it was first published, but we're just getting it now and I highly, highly recommend it. You will not be disappointed. The art, the story, the characters, everything is just perfection in my honest opinion. Mysterious Disappearances is finally out. Well, actually this came out a while ago, but I'm only now getting to it. This is also one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I am a big fan of this series. I started reading the manga, liked it enough, and wanted to wait for the, an official release. And then the anime showed up and that I think boosted the popularity a little bit. And we finally have not one, but two volumes. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna talk about volume one here. This is published by Seven Seas Entertainment entertainment and it is written and drawn by Nujima who quickly turned into one of my favorite modern mangaka. I really enjoy his art. I love how detailed it is but also kind of mysterious and creepy. It reminds me a little bit of something out of Call of the Night if you will. Not as stylized but in the same vein especially with the characters having unique features in their irises for example or the different mysterious phenomena that appear. So what the heck is this about? We follow the character of Ogawa Sumireko, a bookstore clerk with a lot of personality to her. She used to be an accomplished novelist growing up as a teenager and unfortunately this happens with a lot of people in real life. You have this moment of success and sometimes it just falls through and we live with the ghost of past success we're constantly chasing that triumph again and we keep failing. I know from personal experience, I see myself in 
Sumideko's struggle in wanting to sometimes stay relevant and continue creating stuff even when life doesn't have it in store for you. This all changes at the opening chapter when she stumbles across a book that was put on that library instead of shoplifted and when she investigates the book on her birthday, if I remember correctly, it turns out to be this old dialect, this old Japanese poem that she starts reading and it gives her a weird nostalgia vibe and without knowing it she's afflicted a curse on herself which allows her to de-age and become a younger Sumideko. Now the other characters are equally as important especially with Ren Adashino who is this mysterious co-worker that we later find out is much more than a regular human. He is in here to help his sister Oto Adashino. They have been stuck stranded in regular Japan. They were sort of spirited away as kids and now they're seeking a way to go back to their original realm. So how do they do this? Well they sort of have to pay this loan if you will with this mysterious clerk in Kisaragi station. So for them to get to their home they need to investigate the occult and all this different folklore and phenomena that start popping up in Japan. They need to sort of wrangle these occurrences which might manifest in items. These can cause powers or abilities or curses upon people or towns and sort of trade that in which might give them the train ride home that they're so desperately looking for. And in the process they befriend Sumideko going on these adventures chapter by chapter dealing with different phenomena like I mentioned. That sort of in a nutshell is mysterious disappearances. What I'm getting at is if you enjoy urban folklore and if you like Japanese creepypasta and other stuff like yokai, I think you'll be right at home with mysterious disappearances. Now the art to me is the biggest selling point. I love it. I think it's great, but I do have to warn you it is not safe for work in certain areas. Some chapters might have some brief nudity to it, but that's relatively minor compared to the wholesome time you'll have as you read about the adventures of a busty bookstore clerk with her flirtatious co-worker. And finally, we are going to talk about Sister and Giant, A Young Lady is Reborn in Another World. This is also published by Yen Press. This is written by B. Kon. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. This took me by surprise. I had no idea about this series. It first started publication back in 2021, and this is a mix of things. We have Isekai, we got Yudi storytelling, there are some magical action elements to it and a lot of dark fantasy themes. So what the heck is this about? Well essentially we follow the character of Hinako who is reincarnated in another world but she declines the abilities from that world's goddess of having that advantage that isekai protagonists get a sort of that trump card or cheat card when they go to this new world in order to help defeat the demon lord or whatever it may be. Uh, Hinako declines and instead she befriends the character of Aedes, who happens to be an elvish giant lady. Literally, she's a giant. And though the two are from different worlds and species, they quickly share a bond and a friendship. They're known across the lands uh, as the giants. Hinako is known throughout this world as the smallest giant. She's hiding some trauma that gets explored as you read the first volume, which is pretty interesting. I did not expect to have a protagonist to with that type of backstory where the circumstances behind her death and being reincarnated isn't necessarily good. But the main focus of this first volume is that relationship between the two giant siblings, if you will. And at first we see right away some really fantastic dark fantasy elements with the creature designs and the monsters looking really cool. That was the initial draw. I saw that and immediately wanted to pick it up. So when it dropped, I was more than happy to invest in this series and I am looking forward to more volumes. I think it's going to get better as it goes along. There is a pretty giant, <laughs> no pun intended, reveal towards the end in regards to 80s. She was abandoned by her clan of giants, her family, and now she's formed this very sweet and wholesome relationship with Hinako. Hinako uh, lost her arm in our world, so by default you don't see often in isekai stories, but that 
friendship and sisterhood that forms is the glue that binds this book together. And there are a lot of interesting fights and visuals when it comes to, you know, the dynamic of having such a tiny character next to a huge one and how they're able to play off each other's strength in combat and save people because they do work for like uh, the guild and all that stuff. But they do attract attention from the Knights of the Church, which uh, pose a problem and uh, they become villains of sorts. So you get the picture. Honestly, the best things here for new readers that might want to pick this up is that influx of dark fantasy elements. I was not expecting that and it looks pretty badass. I love the characters and I'm very much looking forward to continuing this story and see if Hinako is able to accomplish her mission because slight spoilers. Well, not really because you find out right away. But she didn't isekai alone. There's another character that she considered her sister and that sister did did some unspeakable things to her, which led our protagonist to seek revenge and sort of taint her soul in this new world. So there it is, folks, four new volume ones that I wanted to chat about. If you've read any of these four books, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't, what are some books that are similar to what I talked about that you think I should check out? Pretty interested in knowing that as well. Thank you, everybody, for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of Manga Geekdom. I do have a Discord. The link is in the description below. If you want to join, I'd appreciate that. And you can follow me on social media as well. We can chat over there, too. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you, everybody, once again. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.